J.D. Fentress. Welcome to my kitchen. Tonight we're making potato soup for dinner and I'm world famous for this. My whole family loves this. Uh, this. So I thought I'd share my recipe with you. Uh, what you're going to need to make uh, a really good, completely unhealthy, nothing good about it for you potato soup is a pound of diced bacon, five pounds of diced potatoes, two sweet onions, medium ones, preferably a Vidalia, diced up. You're going to need a carton, I guess how much is this? I put my glasses on and see. One of these larger cartons of heavy cream, which is one quart. You need one quart of uh, heavy cream, half gallon of milk, whole or 2%, at least 2%. Uh, a couple of big pots. One to, you could do a one pot method and cook your potatoes in the pot, then drain them, then use that pot to make your, your stock, or use two. Tonight I'm using two because I'm in a little bit of a hurry, it's getting late, and I need to get the soup on, to things up if I could be boiling my potatoes and making the, the stock at the same time. And you're going to need a little all-purpose flour. Uh, and this, that's really all there is to it, a little salt and pepper. And, but it's so good. There's like I said, there's nothing healthy about this, but it's okay to have it, uh, a meal every now and then that's not good for you. It's nutritious, but that's not necessarily good for you. Potatoes are chock full of starch, and the, and the stock is chock full of saturated fat. But it's filling, it's very satisfying, it's just good. It's one of those kind of a soul food type Dishes that just really is satisfying, and everybody loves it. It's not you don't want to eat it eat it once a week, or even once a month. It's just not that good for you. But it's okay to have something like that every now and then. Something that just really set is satisfying, and everybody loves to eat it. So there's nothing wrong with that. So I'll get back with you here in just a minute as I get to cooking and show it to you. Be right back. Hello everybody, I'm back. Uh, well, I got my pot of potatoes going here. I put uh, some water on there and put my potatoes in there, a little salt. And I got it on uh, the stove there and start boiling. We want to cook those potatoes until they're uh, just barely tender to a fork. You just barely cut through and want a, uh, an al dente because you don't want your potatoes to overcook when you get it in the soup and they're overcooked they'll just turn to mush and you'll have a, a, a bowl of uh, potato mush instead of potato soup. In this pan right here I put a couple of tablespoons of cooking oil in there and my pound of diced up uh, bacon and I'm rendering that bacon down right now to make as much oil as I can out of it and when it gets rendered down real good I'll throw the, uh, the onions in there and saute them until they're translucent. And at that time, I'll put about probably about four tablespoons of flour in there, enough to soak up all the oil. Might take five, might take three. But it's kind of go by feel. It'll be four, anywhere between three and five tablespoons of all-purpose flour. That's the thickener for the soup. And when I after I get that uh, flour all the oil all soaked up in the flour. I'll add my half and half, my uh, heavy cream and my milk, and I'll stir, stir, stir. I just constantly stir it because I don't want the uh, milk is really bad about scorching and having a bad flavor. So <clears throat> you got to stir, stir, stir. You, you turn the heat down, and because you don't want to overcook it too quick, you don't want to. You just got to be really careful not to scorch milk, or it'll give the soup a bad flavor. And you just keep stirring it and keep stirring it until it starts to thicken. 
when it starts to thicken, you can remove it from the heat and add the, you drain your potatoes and add your potatoes, stir it up real good. Salt and pepper it really nice. Get some good salt and pepper in there. Serve it up. You could use uh, chives as a condiment or cheddar cheese, shredded cheddar cheese. And that's really all there is to it. It's just a little bit time consuming, but not real bad. Uh, standing over the hot stove and stirring the, uh, the gravy part, the base of the soup, is probably the most labor intensive because you just got to constantly keep stirring it. Make sure that it does that the dairy products don't scorch. Other than that, it's really simple and it's so good. So I'm going to continue to render this bacon down. You notice I, I keep stirring this bacon too because I don't want it to stick and burn. I don't want anything in my soup to be burned, even if it doesn't uh, give a burn flavor to the soup. It just makes little specks that float around in there. Don't burn specks that don't aesthetically don't look good. So I continue to stir this bacon and keep it loose. Also keeps it like in its own little individual pieces. Let's start to calm down here a little bit. It's not sticking. So I'm gonna let it sit a little bit and turn the heat down a little bit maybe. But it's important to render as much fat out of that uh, bacon as, as possible. Um, what makes this soup so good and so just almost addictive it is the fat it's just loaded with fat <laughs> the you know the heavy cream and the pork fat and then you've got all the starch from the potatoes it's got everything in it that is satisfying uh, but not necessarily good for you <laughs> but that's okay like i said every now and then we could have something that's not absolutely good for us but satisfies our soul and that's okay i'll see you here in a little bit hello everybody well it's time to add these onions. I got this fat, the, this bacon rendering down pretty good. Still got a ways to go, but uh, it'll still continue to render as these onions are cooking down. I want this onion to cook down to a translucent stage. Then, like I said earlier, we'll add our flour and, and milk. And, Stir, stir, stir. So it's doing pretty good. I turned my heat down <coughs> to about medium high. So it's not got too much heat on it. Let's continue to let that cook. I'll get back with you. I got my potatoes over here that haven't started boiling yet, but they're on power boil. And that power boil is pretty amazing. It'll get it up there to heat pretty quick. Hopefully this all comes together about the same time. I'll see you here in just a few minutes. Everybody meet Molly. She's the sous chef. Come here, Molly. Say hi. Say hi, Molly. <laughs> She's the dog that you'll hear barking in the background every now and then. She keeps us in line around here. Hello, everybody. We're going to add some flour to this soup base now. The uh, onions are cooked down nice and tender. I believe I got about as much fat rendered out of that. Uh, bacon as I'm going to get. I, I had some pretty lean bacon so I did add a couple more tablespoons of uh, just regular cooking oil to it. I want to make sure I've got plenty of wool in there. But here we go. We're going to add about four or five tablespoons of flour. I'll put start out with four. See how that does. I might have to add some more. Basically you just want to, whoops, Spilled plenty there, probably a tablespoon on the stove. Um, just want to soak up all the oil. Stir it up, see how it looks. And just remember that you're um, you got to thicken quite a bit of liquid too, so and that's the thickening agent. So I'm gonna put one more tablespoon in there and call it good. There's another tablespoon of flour in there. Get a good thick paste. I'll turn my heat down to about medium. First, I'm going to add my heavy cream. Right here. Just pour it in there. Lots of fat in this. It's very, very fattening. That's what makes it so good. 
Then a half a gallon of milk. Pour it in there. Oh, half a gallon. There we go. The potatoes are still on the stove. They haven't started boiling yet. But they will soon. As this gets, it's not hot right now because I just put all that cold milk in there. So I'm going to stir it around a little bit. Now it's time to add some salt and pepper. Let me get to, I'm going to add probably about two teaspoons, or no, probably about a teaspoon to a teaspoon and a half of salt. About that much right there, if you can see it. Good palm full of salt. We're going to want to add some pepper to it. And let's see here. Get it out of the kit. About the same amount of pepper. We'll palm that too. About a teaspoon and a half pepper. But you can always salt and pepper to taste after you serve it. The person has their different tastes. Salt and pepper is what it's all about. That's the only season you need. As it starts heating up, I'll stir it constantly. And i got to clean up my little flour mash right here. You can't see it. It's not in the camera, but I made a nice little mess here. I'll clean that up before my wife sees it. Potatoes are, are steaming pretty good. They haven't even started boiling yet. I hope this all comes together about the same time. But if it doesn't, that's no problem. I'll just turn the heat off on the base if it gets right and stirred every now and then. And until the potatoes get done. This did save quite a bit of time because if you do the one pot method, you have to cook the potatoes first, drain them, leave them in the colander while you're making the base in the same pot. So this way I'm doing two things at one time. It's going to speed things up a little bit. I got a little late start on dinner tonight. So uh, it makes a, one more pot for my wife to clean up when it comes to cleaning up dishes, but uh, dinner gets on the table a lot sooner. So I'll see you all here in just a little while. Oh, I thought I'd give you the bird's eye view. Here's my soup stock. And I'm just standing here stirring. I got it on about a medium high heat. Just constantly stir. You don't want this milk scorch or you'll run your soup. Make it nice and it's going to be a nice, smooth, rich base. And you can see my potatoes are rolling pretty good. So it won't be much longer for them and I could uh, take them off the heat and just let them sit there. They'll cook in the hot water even a little longer while I'm waiting on this base to get ready. When it all starts coming together, I'll get back with you. Here's a little tip. When you're making soup or other things that have to be constantly stirred. My grandma taught me this. She was born 1900 and she was a real smart lady and one heck of a good cook. Anyhow, she taught me to stir in a figure eight. And if you do that, you'll notice that you get all these counter-rotating uh, agitation from the spoon in there. It really keeps everything mixed up real good. That's a real good idea. And every time, every now and then, I mix it up a little bit just to make sure my spoon hits all the bottom of the pan, make sure I don't have anything sticking down there. But when after I do that, I go right back to my figure eight stirring method. Grandma taught me that, and she was pretty smart. Talk to you later. Hey, I just wanted to show you real quick. I checked on these potatoes, and they're they're what I'd call al dente. Right there, get it where you can see it. There in that spoon, I got a potato, and I can take the back side of that knife, and just with a little bit of pressure, I can push right through that potato. It's done. So I don't want to turn it into mush. So I just, but to keep them hot, I'm going to leave them in that hot water. And I've taken the heat off. I've turned the heat completely off. So they're going to sit there until this base gets ready and it's getting close. And I need to get back stirring it so it doesn't burn. I'll get right back with you in a minute. Okay, what I'm looking for on this base is it for to bring it up to a mild boil. you got to kind of slowly bring it up so you don't scorch the milk. But my potatoes are done. And I'm concerned about those sitting there too long and getting overdone. So I'm Gradually creeping the heat up a little bit on my base. I'm stir, stir, stir. Make sure that I don't uh, scorch my milk. 
But if I, I'm gradually creeping that to heat up a little bit, it'll bring it to a boil a little quicker. As soon as it hits boil, I'm going to push it off the heat and keep stirring it a little bit, and it'll thicken. And you want a nice, uh, you don't want it to be like gravy, but you want a nice thick base for your potatoes so that when you make your soup, it kind of sticks to the potatoes, and when you spoon it out, you get this nice coating on the potato, and it gives it a really good mouthfeel, and it's just loaded with the flavor and goodness. I'll check back with you here in a little bit, probably uh, about the time we get ready to put this all together. I'll drain the potatoes and we'll put it together and serve it up and you can see what it looks like. See you in a little bit. Well, it's time to add the, 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 the base is done. See how it covers the spoon? Sticks to the spoon, it'll stick to the potatoes just like that. You know what, this soup is one of those things, kind of like beans. It's almost better the next day as a leftover. but. Uh, See how it goes like that? That's perfect right there. When it runs off the spoon, it kind of sticks to it like that. It's perfect. Okay, let's add some potatoes to it. And these potatoes are ready. You want to be careful. That's like napalm. Come out of there and burn you. Just slowly add them. I'm getting a little splatter here and there, but hey, that's part of cooking. I think I even got some on my video remote control. It'll wipe off. There we go. Stir those potatoes in. Oh yeah, it's gonna be good. I'll get back with your man. We'll serve it up. See what it looks like. Put some cheddar cheese on top of it. See you in just a minute. Okay, it's time to serve up some of this good old potato soup. Nice and hot. Give it a couple of stirs in the ladle. Come out of there with some, a good bunch of good mess of potatoes. One more. You know, add a little bit of cream to it. Make it nice and creamy. Let's put some cheddar cheese. Well, first, let's put a little, sprinkle a little black pepper on the top of it. Throw some shredded cheddar on top. Won't find it better anywhere. It's the best. It's the best there is, guaranteed. You won't even get better at a restaurant. So, I'll see you next time, and until then, enjoy cooking.